John, do you remember where you are? <laughs> King's College Hospital, <laughs> London. Thank God, thank God. A major trauma centre. Hit the curb, jackknifed onto the verge. Have we got a good pulse? Have we got an output? You know? One of the busiest A&E departments in the world. He will probably scream, but he won't remember. No, stop! Ah! A place where love. Come on, sir. Let's go. Up you go. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. There you go. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> and loss. It's, it's all right. Unfold every single day. Ah! Don't cry. Yeah. Don't and we'll make, make sure right. mummy stays okay. with you. Well, listen. Right, who's not busy? Squeeze that. We can't give up on her. Come on. We've got to be strong for mum. If it is the last bit, hey. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department. Oh! Well in just one 24-hour period. I never cease to be amazed at the robustness of human beings. I love you. And the strength of their relationships. Love, it's a reflex. It's what you do. For many of the families, despite the devastation that they may be facing, they give unconditional love. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I wanna go to bed. I'm not tired, but I want something to eat. I'm hungry. King's A&E, how am I help? Adult male trauma. Code red, yep. Head, chest, limb, yep. Okay, go, sorry, was that motorbike or motor car? Motion bike, hit a car. Okay, cool. Thank you, bye. What is it? It's a motorbike versus a car. Code red. Head, chest and limb injuries. Sick man. Do people want to sign in at the trauma team, please? Yeah, give us a hand. Because if, if we're rapidly infusing, someone's going to have to hold it. No. No, no, it's fine. Can you make sure we have a head to toe CT plus all the code red bloods? So Consultant Chris MTC. is leading a trauma team of 20. We're preparing for a 47 year old man with life threatening injuries. Which cubicle are we in? Four. Four is free, let's do that. Good, chuck it away. So, can we just check this is a male, not a female? It's very important from the blood. The patient is being flown 50 miles to King's by air ambulance. If you're wondering what the impact speed was, whether the patient was thrown distance, whether they hit the windscreen, you know, what other objects they could have hit when they were thrown off. So we're about 10 minutes away, guys. So we all know what we're doing. Everyone's happy with their role. We keep people around the bedside to a minimum because it's getting a bit chaotic in here. It's just OK, right I've got an anaesthetist, I've got a bee doctor, I've got a sea doctor, and I've got my orthopod for us. That's all we need. I'm going to walk up now. 
by Chris Lacey. We have got um, a code red patient, which uh, it's uh, multiple injuries. It sounds like chest, head and limb. I don't let myself hope. I think I'm geared up to treat what injuries come through the door. Who's, do, who's doing bloods? Who's I'm doing bloods. So you're happy? Upset. Okay. Right. You're doing the abdomen. We're all set. We'll just wait. We'll not go anywhere. What's he saying? Don't know, I can't understand him. I think he's throwing. <laughs> Couldn't understand her either. <laughs> <laughs> It isn't you. You're gonna put us in my in my hand? Yeah. Jesus Christ, don't let me see, don't let me look, please. I won't let you look. Mm -mm. I'm not even done anything yet, and you He's <laughs> excited to <laughs> me. <laughs> 69 year old Steve has come in with a fishbone in his finger. Right. I will. He needs to be injected with anaesthetic before it can be removed. And then what I'm going to do is Whoa. put a little injection that side and that side. It's a little two, bit two injection. Yeah. It's a little uncomfortable. Okay. But once it's done, it's done. Sorry, honey. That's one side. That's one side. All right, and now the other side. I was cooking for a lady friend of mine. I was showing off my arm, my skill in cooking fish. You'll thank me later when you can't feel it. I'm talking you right now. <laughs> I can see you're happy about it. Her being in the background, I suppose I got it somewhat distracted, you know, by her um, by beauty, whatever it was. And um, I just got complacent in it, and that's what happened. <sighs> nearly finished. Nearly, nearly, nearly finished. Nearly finished. You're such a comforter. There you go. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Rest it down and I'm going to leave you, you for a couple of minutes okay. now. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. You're so sweet, so thank you. <laughs> I shall back a couple of minutes like okay, that man, just thank work. Thank you very much. All okay, right. Can you read the paper now, shall yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. Can I get two portraits majors for a wire transfer, please? It's 35 minutes since the team last heard from the helicopter medics carrying the code red trauma patient. Oh, come on. You always worry if there's a long time. We all know with trauma that the best outcomes are with those that are treated early on. There we go. They're in the park. If they don't come, you worry, has something happened en route? Have they had to stop to do something? Has something gone wrong? Yeah, um, five minutes away. OK, so I've got an A, B, C, D. Patient in the 
helicopter is Gary, a 47-year-old single father of two. It was during the evening and I received a phone call from the police and the gist of it was that Gary had been involved in a terrible road accident and that he probably would not survive the night. Gemma's nurse one, I'm nurse two. She's doing blood, I'm doing monitoring. Who's doing airway? Me. Helping. I remember feeling numb, trembling. It was just an experience that I hope not to experience at any other time in my life. Everything's We've there, ready to go anyway. We've got for A airway. nurse, B nurse, C nurse. Yes. Yeah. You have We're organised. Do they need to smoke, need anything? We've just got it. It's two hours since Gary was on his motorbike heading home and had a head-on collision with a car. If someone's been hit by a car on their bike, there's no protection. It's literally, you know, the rider versus the impact of the car. If two cars collide, you've got some crumple. But if you're on a bike and your car hits you, that's it. Gary is on life support has been placed in a medically induced coma to reduce the risk of brain damage. Everything consultant Chris and her team do in the next 15 minutes will be solely to keep Gary alive. This is Gary, he's 47 years old. He was riding a motorcycle this afternoon and had a head-on collision with the car. Both the motorcycle and the car were very significantly damaged. Injuries top to toe, he has a head injury, he has a large scalp laceration down to the bone, he has right-sided rib fractures, right-sided femur, and an open tib and fib fracture. You're thinking what will kill him okay. first. You've got quite a lot of information that's flashed in front of you. Uh, you've got uncertainty. Sometimes this doesn't quite add up. OK, as soon as we've done the ABCDE, we're going to CT, guys. As soon as we're happy, we'll go straight to CT. If the blood pressure is above 90, we're going round the corner. We've got bloods? Yeah, We're just getting bloods. I get bloods. We're going to take bloods and we're going to CT. You're always thinking about the chances of survival. OK, fine. Can we cover 20 Not yet. It's freezing now. Have we got a good palpable pulse? Like for some reason, the blood is not running through. I don't know what the pelvis is, so I can't do a femoral stab, Leanne. Can we just hang up a minute? I want a blood pressure. If we're not getting one on the cuff, can we recite the cuff? But uh, before we push any more blood in, I'd like to know what we've got. Have you got a pulse on the groin? No? Have we got a good pulse anywhere else? Have we got an output anywhere else? We need to cut the screen. I can't get a blood pressure. Do we have an output? Output. I can't feel it. Yeah, I can feel his heart beating. You've got a pulse in the right groin. I have a pulse in the right groin. Okay, fine. He's got a stats trace. Are we happy to go to CT? I'm. I'm happy. I'm happy. You're happy. Anaesthetist, are you happy? Yeah. Okay. Hi, it's Chris Lacey. Um, our, our trauma call. Are you happy to go us to come round? He's not particularly stable, but we're... Yeah, OK. Thanks, bye. Probably don't want to look at this. Don't fight me, please. Now, I could give you a bit more local anaesthetic. Oh, God, please, please, what have we... Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Not even touched you, really. I've only been pressing very lightly. <sighs> Let me go and get one of my colleagues. First day back and my first failure. <laughs> I was looking forward to that too because it's really juicy. 
So, but he's in so much pain when I try, I've given him loads of lignocaine, but it's just got no effect on him. Managed to use a paper, but touch it, it jumps out the seat, so. I would love to get married again. I don't want to um, face life by myself like this. I would like to get married again, yes. And I'm married to a wonderful woman. But I lost that. I let my wife down. Above all, I let myself down. Life is about change. Life is about growth. And I, I, would, I would like to think I have changed. I think I'm more mature now. I think I'm more relaxed now. I think I have more respect now. I, and I think I, would, I think I would deal with married life much different from, uh, from before. Twenty-year-old Hannah has been brought in by her mum with an extreme allergic reaction to her face cream. How you doing, missus? All right? Uh, yeah, my face is just very tight now. Still sore? No, it, no, it's not sore. It's just very dry and uncomfortable. I'm going to get some kind of... see if we can get some creams, but it's just really excoriated around here, isn't it? What can we put on that, like... And I don't know if it's Vaseline still Vaseline or... Because the face was so swollen, obviously you think about the airway, if there's swelling inside the face and in the throat and things like that, and her tongue. So until you know that her airway is safe, you would always put a patient with that amount of facial swelling that's clearly having a reaction to something in, in recess. Me, okay. I don't want to put anything on it because I don't want to make it worse. I just want to leave, think we should leave it alone at the moment, yeah? Oh, just, I know it's sore, but just try and hang in there. If Once the swelling goes down, it won't be so bad. We've just got to wait for that medicine to work. I'm allergic to wheat and soya bean, nuts, eggs, cow's milk, um, tree pollen and grass pollen, uh, hair dye, and then a whole bunch of chemicals that are in things like washing up liquid, cosmetics. How you doing? Your eyes are opening. Yeah. They are, aren't they? When a patient first comes into any, &E, it's a guessing game. It's like Sherlock Holmes just trying to work out What's going on? What do they say? That you are allergic to oat. I am. Oat in this. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh, at least we know what it is. <laughs> no, no. No, right, give that a good so wipe much. and get all that off. It's just baby wipes. I'm sure you're hopefully not allergic to those. Um, we'll rinse it off with water afterwards, OK? Oh, that stings like... It's busy, isn't it? Do you want to sweat? We'll have a poem, oh yeah, please. <laughs> How did you manage to get a um, fish a bone? Fish bone? I was scaling a fish. If you're scaling a fish, how can you get a fish bone in it? I think that's a very nonsensical question to ask, but I'm not going to rebuke you. I'm going to try to answer that question to the best of my own answer. You I'm, 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 I'm giving you an answer. How can I manage to get a fish bone in my finger? It's very, very simple. Like no. you get a fish Why bone in your throat. While you're scaling. It all depends how the bone, how tall the bone is, and what type of fish I was scaling. Right. It happened. It happened. I can give you a plausible reason as to how it happened, but it does happen. It happened. Okay. That's the best you, answer you I can render. You going. I think it's a fish bone, sir. Because yes, yes, yes. Do you feel me touching your hair? Do you no, feel this? no, sir. Do you feel that? No, sir. Do you feel here? No, sir. I'm sorry for my being boisterous a while ago, no, sir. You're not boisterous. Um, you're fine. Very sorry for him um, to be rude. You're not boisterous at all. Thank you. Is this painful for you? No, sir. No. Oh, 
Oh, that's it. Mm. You said you you, you said you loved me and you were jumping around for me. But I, I, I don't feel it now. I would jump. I would jump. I this, is, this is a new knife, sir. We just opened it. She the one she used before, she had it at home. Put it, speed and potato. Chopping carrots <laughs> and, and She's such and a sweet stuff. bear. She's yeah. just sweet, man. I can't believe you've just done that. I can't believe it. After all the hard work and you've got all the glory. No, I, I do the same thing. I just need to be more patient to let it work. <laughs> You're saying I'm impatient? She's yeah. trying to do her best not to inflict any more wound in me, so she become very meticulous. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Doctor. Just keep some pressure on it, sir. OK, sir. Thank Thanks a lot, man. Okay. I appreciate it. I believe you took all my glory. I am, I am a little bit lonely. Sometimes the loneliness grabs you. I regret not being the father I would love to be able to be. I regret not being the husband I ought to be. I regret not being loyal and loving and caring as I have gotten from my, from, 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 from my family. I regret not being able to give them some of the things that they have given me. They give me love, they give me compassion, they give me understanding. What have I given them? Anxiety and stress, etc. Yeah, I regretted that. Ready, steady, go. So ready, steady, go. Since his arrival in A&E, oh. motorcycle okay, accident victim Gary has had almost half bit. the blood in his body replaced. OK, now you just stop. Maybe you need to just yeah. readjust and get her arms in the right yeah. place. But it's not actively bleeding, is it? No. 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 OK. He had injuries to both sides of his chest. We knew he had a bad head injury. So you're worrying, is there something in the head that's going to cause big clots or bleeding into the brain. Um, you're worrying about spinal injuries. This is the this is the motorcyclist versus a car, possibly at high speed. None of us actually know what's around the corner. I didn't spend a lot of time with Gary before. And with hindsight, you would think, gosh, I wish I'd done things differently, wish I'd made more effort. Pupils reacting. Isn't family more important than all the other things? Shouldn't we make more time to do things with people who are important to us so we don't have regrets at some stage? He's got a fracture there, yeah. yeah. And he's not noted to move his lower limbs. Marcus has come to King's with stomach pain. Yeah. As it's his first time in A&E, he's brought a friend along for support. This is actually unbelievable, man. This is actually unbelievable. I can't believe this. Like, is that much of a pain? Yeah. So why don't you take painkillers then? No, I'm just going to walk. Stay cool. It's an RTC motorcyclist versus car brought to us from Hampshire by Surrey and Sussex 
Jones. Gary's scans reveal his injuries are no longer immediately life-threatening. Not noted to be moving his lower limbs, but moving upper limbs on scene. Chris's worry now is that he may be paralysed. He has a fracture at the T11-12 region. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of free air that's in the soft tissue behind the spines, which we're not certain where he's, where he's come from. Before we log roll him, we'd like your opinion on what you think of that. You can have broken bones around the spinal cord, but not always injury to the cord in the middle, which carries all the nervous impulses. And so it's important for us to understand um, fairly quickly how much damage there is. The spine has a T11 fracture, which neurosurgery are coming down to have a look at. I just spoke to the on-scene doctor who said he did not notice him moving his legs. Gary was very much a family man. Immediately before the accident, sadly, he'd separated from his wife, but he was a pretty hands-on dad, actually. He, he doted on his children. He'd go out to the garage and, you know, he would tinker a bit or fix the children's go-kart or little motorbike, you know, for, for his son. He'd always like to tinker. He was great fun. I can't say he should never have got on a bike, to be honest, because where do you draw the line? With hindsight, he might not have made that trip, but he wouldn't have lived his life differently. A year ago, 58-year-old Terry was diagnosed with lung cancer and given two weeks to live. I've got to lay down because he's paining me when I'm sitting up. I'll see if I can do it. Oh. Oh. Do you want to be sat up some more? I think that would be sick. Oh, now I'm getting a pain in my leg. Every side. Oh. And I'm going to miss Judge Judy. Well, you got it taped. What are you worried about? You got it ten days taped. Yeah, I haven't got the energy to do it. What are you muttering about? I said, I ain't got the energy to do anything. You think yourself lucky? At least you can shut your eyes and go to sleep laying and then with your feet up. I smoke more now since I've been ill than I ever did because it's boredom, isn't it? When I first was diagnosed, I thought it was just getting old and, you know, walking to the station. I found it harder every day, getting out of breath, and I just put it down to too many fags and getting old. Then I went to my doctors and sent me to the hospital and they did diagnose cancer. Yeah, a bit of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it is a shock. Oh. What's the problem today? What do you think the problem is? Does I look well? Huh? Pains in my feet are swollen up and pain. My, my foot's all swelled up and painful and everything. And well, I've got lung cancer, that's originally what I was in, and chemotherapy. I mean, I think it's a question of all the medication I've been on, the steroids. You're on chemotherapy? Finished it now. You finished it now? Yeah, there's no more they can when do, it's the all finished. Four weeks ago? Four weeks ago. There's no more they can do, it's over, finished. Terry's not a person you can sit and go, oh, I do feel sorry for you. He's just not that type of a person. You know, you, you say to him, well, you know, you know, you know, you know you've got it. You know how far it's progressed. You know how to deal with it now. You know, and if you can't deal with it on your own, I'm here to deal with it with you. But I'm not going to sit there and, and wallow in self-pity with you. We are going to fight whatever it is, you know, that comes along. And this is what we've done. You know, Terry, Terry's a fighter. He's not giving in on anything. Any chance of a cup of tea? Uh, after this. I'm going to keep on till I get one. Just as you doze off, someone's going to come in and wake you up, you know that, don't you? And poke oh, you they're waiting for a cup of tea. 
At least judge your toenails, can't so that's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, and you're here. And your beard's off, so you're all so right. So I asked me to fill out, all right. Okay. Oh, pain. Pain. Stomach. I have a quick thing for Tom. Yeah. Uh, I have a listen to your chest as well. Yeah. Um, in, in abdominal pain, yeah. you should check the back passage as well. All right, that's fine. Yeah? yeah? Have you had that examination before? Uh, no. Okay. No, but, uh, I haven't you, been tested okay. at all. You usually involves um, inserting one finger into the back passage to check if there's any problems in Ooh. the back passage. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Huh? No, not there. Mostly in the middle. In the middle here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, so if I just get you to, to lean onto your, um, onto your left hand side. Uh, oh, like, yeah. yeah. That's it. <laughs> so just bring your knees up towards your chest. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. You okay, Anna? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit tighter. Oh! Oh, All right. Yes, sir. Can we see? Yeah, more open, most definitely. Look here. You know, the allergies are actually, in terms of my life, are quite recent. Um, when I was younger, I was carefree. It's literally only in the last three years that it's been bad. You and Dad are so great. She probably doesn't see how I feel. You kind of cry inside, really. Yeah. I know there are worse things that happen to people, but me being her mum, I do, I do find it really hard to know how to to um, make her feel better. So what you need to know, it doesn't go unappreciated. And you don't know what I would do if I had to sit here on my own right now. If I'd, kn if I'd have known what was coming, I'd probably say I would have stuffed my face every day. I regret not trying more because when I was growing up, I didn't like to try a lot of stuff. I like to stick to what I know and now I wish that I'd tried it. <laughs> you want to go home? Am I allowed to go home now? Of course you are. Am I? I've always, okay. always said every, every situation that could possibly happen, it has to happen to someone, and this just happens to be my thing. This is my one thing I'm hoping that I got in my life that was, you know, not fantastic to deal with. They've done nothing. I've come in and saw the ulcer five weeks oh. ago. <laughs> the district, yeah, district nurse come in and dressed it once. Be careful, yeah? Yeah, I'm okay, thank you, darling. Want any chocolate biscuits? Wait for the doctor. I know. Well, I wouldn't take his time, will really. Go and wake him up. Hopefully, your second dip is Yeah, go and wake him up. He's probably a kip somewhere. He's <laughs> probably sitting on a chair on a kip now. <sighs> Disgusting. You drank it anyway. <laughs> Wet and warm, innit? Yep. Wet and warm. His brother died last year and I looked after his brother. Mm. Mm. I wouldn't have done that. No, you shouldn't have done that, <laughs> should you? No. His brother said to me, if anything happens to me, Terry won't handle it. Make sure uh. he's all right. And, and, you know, you look after him. I wouldn't say we enjoy each other's company. We tolerate each other. But we get on. And because of Tom and what Tom asked, then, then I now do it for Terry. Yeah, a couple of papers on the way home. Who said you're going home? Oh, he's staying here. You won't go home, I shouldn't think. They're going to have to give you a massive dose of antibiotics. They give me the night, but I'm going yeah. home tomorrow. Yeah. 
at night, no three o'clock, is it? <laughs> Why, is it race time at three It's racing day tomorrow, I knew, yeah. I knew that's what you was going to say, it's race day tomorrow. Yeah. He likes the pub and racing are the only two things that I know that he, him and his brother have ever liked. He loved, they love their drink, you know? Two, I've never known two people like drink so much, but they did like their drink, and that was their life. That was it. Can't you look at your newspaper and phone them through to one I of could them? do, but it's not the same. I'd like to watch it. I'll get your telly up here and you can watch it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I've got neurosurgery here with me. Okay, so you said the facet joints are widened at that T11. Okay, and the canal at the week, yeah, we can't tell, I agree. It's just, yeah, we won't know. We won't know. Depending on where the spinal injury is will depend on at which point your function is cut off. Um, and the area that he had fractures would be sort of lower limbs. You need to know for sure. And you can't know for sure until you wake somebody up. It's grim. It doesn't happen a lot, but it, you know, it is, it's grim. Nothing else we need to do. We're just going by our plane when you're ready. Yeah. When that's written up, the notes are done. The trauma team have done all they can, and Gary will be taken to intensive care. I'd be happier if I had a temperature. Yeah. His family is being informed We couldn't get along the way. It's too cold. He's stable at the moment. He's been seen by a number of different specialists. He's going to go to our intensive care unit. Um, at the moment, we have had our CT scan, which has shown us a number of injuries, none of them which are immediately life-threatening. So I can put your mind at risk there. I think you never want to break bad news over the phone if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, but by the same token, you don't want to lie or deceive or lead on a relative. He'll, he'll need some further imaging tonight, which is a, an, an MRI, which is to look at his spine, to his, lower, uh, to his lower back. So he's had lots of pipes and tubes going into them, but he's doing very well um, and he's very stable. Okay. Right. So he's in good hands. Very shortly he'll go round to a ward called surgical critical care. I suppose if I hadn't been expecting that maybe he had died, this would have been bad news that he was so badly injured. But because I'd been expecting to hear perhaps that he had died, this was good news. So the fact that he had all these horrendous injuries, but he was alive and there was hope was wonderful. suspect Marcus has irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, when I walk, cause I, I walked out like hobbling hobbling in that cause. I went like, when he done it, cause I was like, oh, cause it hurt. My man was gone from. Cause he just put it up there, but they had to do it. He had to do it cause he didn't need to do that for me. Cause, oh, I feel loose blood. <laughs> I feel, I feel loose. Are they taking me next? Who? These lot. Taking you? Taking me. Taking you nowhere? Not at the moment. You're dreaming again, aren't you? Uh, Why well, have you got your arm up near? I don't know. You're waiting for a bus or something? Pubs are still open. 
That's what your right arm's for, love. Yeah. I ain't got nothing else. <laughs> Jacko there. Was Jacko at the pub? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got to see him at least. Yeah, no one made it. Why? Yeah, no one. I didn't say nothing to him. I just let him wash. I said, look. I told him what was going on there. I know ain't got long. You know all that. There's vinyl diagnosis and all that. Yeah. I said, do you fancy coming away again in March? Oh no, I can't do anything in March. He said, I've got go to Cheltenham and watch some races. Yeah. And somebody else. And I felt like saying, Jacko. This is my last ever holiday. Yeah. And my last drink with you yeah. for good. You could bloody well go any time. You couldn't cancel all horse racing meeting. So I just walked away. Mm. Yeah, because you can do that any time. Yeah, so I said, yeah, yeah you could go it's like what you said to George. After. Yeah. Yeah. You, really you can do all them I things after. Nothing. I just let it mm. pass, but I, I was really annoyed with that. Mm. Mm. I get more angry than I get upset. Because I, I wonder why. You know what I mean? Two brothers diagnosed very shortly after each other. You know, what's the chances of that? You know, most people have one in a family that's ill. Unfortunately, this family had it, and it was only a few months after each other. So it is a bit of a kick. But no, we get through it. Oh, my brother, he's a twin brother, identical twins, Tom. I miss him terribly. We've done everything together. Everything. There weren't a day go by where we didn't speak to each other or see each other, even when we was with our partners. <clears throat> Don't start me off, I miss him terribly. 57 he was. What's this? Um, 77 on stuff on you have at home. Thank you. That's not the same, is it? Yeah. Tastes so different. No, yeah, Sometimes, in a way, it makes it oh. not so bad when I think about it. I think myself, well, I can, at least I can join Tom. Not going to be on my own, you know what I mean? I've got me brother. There's a lot of A&E nurses and the character that we are, people think you're a bit nutty and you're a little bit hyperactive and you're a bit... But I think when you do that job every day and you realise how short your life can be, literally nothing's taken for granted. You know, you can end just like that. You're not going to waste the day, are you? You're just going to do it. With us. It wasn't for some weeks that actually made the diagnosis and told him, Gary, you're not going to walk. Gary. This was the one where the car went over the top of us. Oh, Gary. With this one. This is the one where they got the bar. That's it. He was explaining. The okay. bar goes all the way down. Yeah. And that, and he had it. I talked to my husband on the way home and I'd just cry, you know, with the, the sadness. You know, everything that had happened and how different his life was going to be. It was just a very, very sad time. I won't never make any stupid mistakes like that. Before. Good. That's 100%. That <laughs> is. I want to live a lot longer and I want to watch my kids grow up and have them watch them and when they have kids. <laughs> Yes, I can get to that shop, I'm starving and thirsty. You can push me all right. You watch this one. And make up. Please. Be careful. 
Don't they smell really nice? <laughs> Can I give Willow a <laughs> Is it? Ah, uh, oh, no. I don't know if that's a good idea with chewing gum for a horse. Ah, oh, cheers. What, you don't put your fingers? Do you have one more? Good girl. Oh, Thank nice you. one, Jen. You're doing really well. Just go careful, sweetheart. I can do a double one. They're saying you can have an electric wheelchair. If I did have an electric wheelchair, I'd want something which has got some oomph in it so you could play, <laughs> so I can put wheelies on it <laughs> and have a bit of fun with the kids. <laughs> I know. How old am I? 48? Or is it five years old? <laughs> yeah, see, see, you know you are. I love you. That's well impressive. Yeah. Wow. Ah. Look it, look it, look it, look it, look it. Look it. You weren't particularly attached to those t-shirts, were you? They're the best t-shirts I've ever bought, to be honest with you. <laughs> Laugh, and the world laughs with I you. I know, yeah. What I want you to do is get your bottom right up on the, the chair. With bath armour? Cry, and you sleep alone. They look after me nice today. <laughs> <laughs>